Good evening. I hereby call to order the March 24th, 2021 meeting of the Gaithersburg Historic District Commission. Uh, for the record, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the meeting is being remotely telecast, so please bear with any of the bumps in the road that we encounter. Uh, for our roll call, please answer present when I call your name. Planner 2, Chris Berger. Present. Community Planning Manager, Greg Mann. Present. Uh, Deputy City Attorney, Frank Johnson. Present. Uh, Commissioner and Vice Chairman, John Rotting. Present. Commissioner, Mary Jo LaFrance. Present. Commissioner, Mark Feinstein. Present. Uh, Commissioner, Rudy Morgan. Present. Uh, and myself, Commissioner and Chairman Dimentola says present. Okay, we have a quorum and uh, Commissioner Morgan's role tonight is as a full commissioner. Next is our preliminary statement, which is as follows. Uh, this commission is empowered to meet uh, and act under Article 12 of the City Code of Gaithersburg. The technical qualifications of the staff of this commission and the members of the commission are on file with the City of Gaithersburg and are available uh, upon request to any applicant and are hereby made part of the legal record of each and every application heard tonight. Each application heard today is considered on its own merits and is not to be considered as establishing precedent for any other application. Okay, does anyone have, any commissioner have any conflicts of interest for any of the applications uh, being heard tonight? If so, please raise your hand and verbally indicate so. And I see and hear no one, very good, all right. Next is we have one set of minutes, which is from the February 24th, 2021 20, uh, meeting. Does any commissioner have any corrections or additions to the meetings? If so, please raise your hand and verbally indicate so. And I see and hear no one. Okay, so I make a motion to adopt the minutes as written. May I have a second? Second. second. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, all right, so let's have a roll call to vote on the minutes. When I call your name, please say aye if you support the motion to adopt the minutes. Nay, if you don't, I'll stay in if you wish. Commissioner Roddy. Aye. Commissioner LaFrance. Aye. Commissioner Feinstein. Aye. Commissioner Morgan. Aye. Okay, and myself, Commissioner Ventola says aye, so it's five to zero, motion passes. Uh, okay, first up now for the official business, we have two historic area work permits to review, which, is, which are, as all, are also known as HOPs. Uh, please note that the members of the public will be invited to participate. Um, so the first one up is HIST-8822-2021, which is to move the clock from Hershey, excuse me, from History, History Park to the southeast corner of Diamond and Southern Avenue at 5 South uh, Summit Avenue in the CBD, which is the Central Business District. May I have an introduction from staff, please? Yes, if the tech team can pull up page 10, please. So this application comes before the HDC in accordance with section 24-227 of the city code. Uh, the property is individually designated as the B&O Railroad Station and that is uh, pay, packet page 10, please. The city seeks to relocate the clock 140 feet to the Northwest. So it will be in a more prominent location within the Old Town Plaza. You can see on this map, the current location and the proposed location. If we go to the next page, please. Here's the clock now in History Park next to the B&O Railroad Station. It's about 11 feet tall. It is dedicated to Leonard Katz and Sarah Wolfson Katz, longtime Gaithersburg merchants. If we can go to the next page, please. Here's another view of the clock that also shows the proposed location in the background. When it's moved, the concrete base will be cut down to grade and covered with mulch. Next page, please. The clock will be placed on a new concrete base with a diameter of 18 inches within the existing planting bed next to the proposed water feature equipment vault. It was approved by the HDC in January with HIST 8735 2020. Obviously that equipment hasn't been installed yet. The clock's approximate location will be to the left of the tree in this photo. That tree, which is a service berry, will be removed to make way for the clock. Uh, next page, please. The two clock faces will point toward north and south. This photo is facing due south. Next page, please. And this photo is facing west. 
The base of the clock will be partially screened by plantings. Electric power will be connected from the circuit within the equipment vault. This location was selected to make use of the existing electrical connections. And joining us tonight, we have Assistant City Manager Tom Lonergan, if you have any questions. Welcome, Tom. Welcome back, actually. Would you like to add anything further to what Chris has said? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for having me. Uh, no, I think Chris covered it pretty well. Uh, as you're probably all aware, uh, this, clock, this clock was acquired, um, I believe it was three years ago, Chris, um, somewhat of, of a replacement clock for the much larger one that once stood at this site where the plaza is now located. Uh, as you know, it's uh, recognition, it's, its intent is to recognize the Katz family and their um, multi-general, a uh, generational contribution to Old Town. Um, the purpose of the relocation, frankly, is in order for this clock to get uh, more visibility um, and greater recognition by the community. And that's why it's before you tonight. Wonderful, thank you. Um, John Schlichten, would you like to add anything or along the way, please do. Well, thank you, Dean. I um, have nothing to add, although I support this application. Okay, wonderful, thank you. All right, next then is the public is now invited to speak. Uh, to indicate that you want to make a comment, if you're on a computer or a laptop, move your mouse to the bottom center of the Zoom window and you should see, you should see a raise hand button pop up. Uh, click on that button and then, and then we can call on you. If you're dialing in on a telephone, uh, please press star uh, nine to raise your hand. So uh, have we, do we have anyone from the public coming in? on this? I see no one. Okay, very good. All right, then we'll move on. Okay, um, next then is let's hear from the commissioners. Uh, when I call your name, just please state your thoughts and questions for the applicant. Uh, Commissioner Roddy. I have no questions. I, I think it's a good idea. Wonderful. Commissioner LaFrance. I am pleased that it will be moved to a more prominent place. That's a and wonderful that's statement. Okay, very good. Commissioner Feinstein. I agree with Commissioner LaFrance and Commissioner Roddy. Okay, Commissioner Morgan. I have no comments. I support the application for relocation of the clock to this new proposed location. Wonderful, and I agree with everybody. Okay, so <laughs> next then, may I have a motion to approve uh, with or without conditions or deny this application? This is the easiest one of the night, guys. <laughs> yeah, I would make uh, the motion uh, not adopt the uh, verbiage that uh, the city staff has used. No, amend no amendments and no conditions. Wonderful, may I have a second? Second. second. Very good, okay. Um, all those in favor, uh, what I'll do is do the roll call. Uh, so if you support the the, uh, the, um, uh, the motion, uh, say aye if you don't, uh, nay, or abstain if you wish. Commissioner Roddy? Aye. Commissioner LaFrance? Aye. Commissioner Feinstein? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Commissioner Ventola says aye. So five to zero, it passes. Congratulations to the applicant and city. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all. Very good. All right. Yeah. Good. All righty. Next then we have HIST-8823-2021, which is the rehabilitation of the Crown Farm corn crib at 403 uh, to cover a lead drive in the MXD, which is the Mixed Use Development Zone. Do we have an introduction from staff? Yes, if the tech team can pull up page 65, please. The property is individually designated as the England Crown Farm. The map on the screen highlights the location of the corn crib in the center of the property. The application comes before the HDC in accordance with section 24-227 of the city code. And now I will ask the tech team to pull up our drone footage of the property.
do we have the drone footage available? Yeah, I just had to resize it. Hang on one second. Okay. And I'll just keep talking while he's doing that. So the city has submitted an historic area work permit and there we have it. Um, requesting that the HDC approve the rehabilitation of the corn crib. Um, in 20, 2006, the Marin City Council approved the Crown Farm annexation. One of the annexation requirements was the establishment of a city park on part of the farmstead. The property has since been divided into two parcels. In 2008, the Mayor and Council adopted the resolution to designate the England Crown Farm. A fire in 2011 destroyed the dairy barn, milk house, and the hay barn, among other smaller buildings. The city assumed ownership of this particular property on January 15th, 2020, and rehabilitation of the corn crib is an initial step as the city prepares the property to be a public park. Soon the city will release a survey to see community input on that future park. Okay, if we can return to the packet and go to page 66. And this is the only historical photo we have of the property. And you can see the corn crib in the background in the center left, it's the building where you can see light through the middle. Mm -hmm. The log house and the corn crib are the two oldest buildings on the property and date to the mid to latter half of the 19th century. If we can go to the next page, please. I'll quickly go through the elevations, which you've already seen. This is the front or the east elevation. The original core of the building is the two-story section of timber frame construction. The shed roof addition to the left is labeled on building plans as building N1. It dates to the early 1900s. Next page, please. This is the north elevation. I'll point out that there is a concrete foundation at the base here, which was a later alteration. And next page, please. This is the west elevation. The building, which is N3 on the plans, is a one-story addition. It's in the foreground. It dates to the early 1900s. Um, this addition was extended in the late 1900s. And next page, please. And this is the south elevation. It includes what's labeled on the plans as building N2. It was constructed in the 1980s. And next page, please. The historic district guidelines for the Brooks, Russell, and Walker historic district and individually designated sites apply. Here, the second bullet under house design elements, contributing resources are encouraged to restore original features when possible and sufficiently well documented. Although many of the houses are eclectic in their decorative details and this eclecticism should be preserved, intentional mixing of style elements or addition of new style elements is discouraged. Next page, please. Under materials, the first two bullets apply. The historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features in spaces that characterize a property shall be avoided. Deteriorated historic features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature, a new feature shall match the old in design texture and other visual qualities and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features shall be substantiated by documentary, physical, or pictorial evidence. And next page, please. Under siding, the second bullet reads, it is encouraged to restore the original siding. And next page, please. Under roofing, the first bullet, original material should be retained, match, restored, if possible. And page, next page, please. For windows, the second bullet, original window, wooden window sashes are worth rehabilitating. And if we can go to the next page, and next page again, please. So now I will turn it over to architect Mark Thaler of Lacey Thaler Riley Wilson to go over the drawings. Welcome, Welcome Mr. Thaler. Thaler. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Chris. 
Um, so the uh, the work that's being done on the corn crib is uh, really restoration work. Um, <clears throat> it's basically uh, making repairs and uh, there are very little uh, changes uh, that we will see. Um, what um, we can see right here on the on the front facade, one of the things that in fact will be changed is the uh, opening that is currently enclosed in that photograph that Chris was pointing out where you could see daylight right through the structure. Originally, you could take your wagon and go, you know, right through, unload the, uh, the corn into the corn cribs on either side of that opening. Uh, and then uh, they also would use the upstairs for the storage of uh, barley and wheat. Um, and that would uh, get up there, you know, by uh, a grain elevator up through the window um, from my discussions when I did a uh, report on the entire farm back in 2013, I had uh, spoken with um, Mr. Daniel Stinton, who uh, was the uh, grandson, well, the son of uh, the last owners. Uh, and his, his mom uh, was also providing information on uh, some specifics in terms of what she remembered, how the, uh, the structure was utilized. Um, but as you can see here, the, um, the clabberts themselves, uh, especially on this particular uh, face, are in uh, pretty weathered, uh, poor condition. Um, so we will be uh, restoring the clabberts. Obviously, we will be replacing ones that are uh, too far gone. Um, when we take the, the clabberts off on this particular elevation, um, it will also allow us to make uh, repairs to the, uh, the timber framing uh, behind. The uh, timber framing is all uh, chestnut, um, so we are uh, certainly uh, doing our best to uh, maintain all of the, um, the fabric that we can. Uh, where we do need to um, provide additional pieces where the um, uh, material has either too badly rotted or, or there's pieces missing, uh, we'll actually uh, provide a, a new piece. Uh, you know, we'll cut out the, the bad section, put in a new piece and, and use fasteners there. Um, very limited uh, use of uh, any sort of additional um, steel, although there, there's a few spots where uh, we're actually uh, using some steel brackets where, you know, some tenons had, had actually uh, uh, failed uh, completely. So pretty much everything that we are doing uh, in this regard is uh, trying to maintain the, the original fabric. Um, you can see also in this photograph a little bit to the left, um, to the, to the right of where that woman is standing. There's another uh, large piece of uh, red plywood. There, there's actually doors behind that, large swing doors. Um, those are completely shot. Uh, and those, those were part of the, uh, the building when the uh, addition was put on. Those will be, uh, replica doors will be uh, put on. Uh, the door that you see that's open, that's a, uh, a door that you can walk in. That door will be restored, and there's an identical door uh, over on the far right, uh, which is boarded over there, and uh, that door uh, will get replicated in that place. So can you move to the next, uh, next sheet, please, and the next sheet? Right. Um, I think we've already sort of gone over what, uh, you know, where, where the site is. There's a little bit of uh, additional work on the grounds. So there are some areas where uh, there's exposed concrete where there had been uh, buildings prior, uh, some paving uh, materials and, and some foundation work, not foundation, but slab, slab work. Those are going to be taken up um, and the, uh, the ground uh, will uh, 
you know, be covered over and, and reseeded uh, so that, uh, you know, we don't have, have those kinds of areas uh, exposed at this point. Uh, we will also provide a, uh, for future uh, electrification of the, the building, we will put in a uh, PVC pipe sleeve through the foundation so that uh, in the future we can uh, bring electric over uh, without doing any uh, damage to the work that we're doing uh, in this project. Next, please. So here uh, are some of the drawings that um, we have. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can see here where uh, we're showing the various types of uh, wood connection repairs uh, for all the framing. Um, and also uh, on the uh, southern wall, which is the southern foundation wall of N1, which is uh, toward the bottom of that sheet, there's a um, concrete foundation wall that uh, has failed. Um, some of it has completely crumbled uh, on, on one half of it. The other half has sort of, because it didn't go down below frost, had sort of twisted out and created a, uh, a condition where that stud wall is actually buckling uh, at its center. We'll actually uh, remove the failed uh, concrete foundation there and uh, provide a new uh, concrete foundation. Again, this is uh, this addition is early 20th century. Um, it was sort of in the beginning of, of when they were utilizing uh, concrete and that was frankly not the best, but also the fact that it uh, didn't go below frost, um, you know, really exacerbated any issues. We also at the uh, left end of, of that same space, um, there's a, a foundation wall that uh, we're going to fill in because, you know, there have been uh, animals uh, that have used it as dens previously and, and undermined underneath the foundation. So that will be filled in. Can you go to the next, please. This is the, the second floor of the corn crib structure. Um, as you can see here, there's actually a stair uh, that goes up into that uh, granary space. For the most part, that space will just simply be uh, cleaned up. Um, it's in otherwise uh, pretty good shape. The, um, uh, the whole space has a uh, uh, roughly three foot high um, beadboard wainscot that goes around that actually kept the grain from falling into the uh, the various areas in between framing members. So it sort of kept the, the whole uh, floor, uh, you know, usable that way. Can you go to the next one? And then we're just showing, you know, here in some of the framing plans, the, the specific things that need to be replaced. Uh, we have some sistering of some existing joists and also in N3, which is um, pretty much at nine o'clock on, on this plan right here, the, the northern end of that space is uh, pretty well rotted away, and we have about three feet of that structure that is going to be rebuilt. Next. Similarly, just showing some uh, additional uh, framing details. Next. So you can see here, we just talked about the uh, east elevation. Um, on the north elevation, the um, other than having the uh, clabberts restored, where that uh, concrete is at the foundation, uh, it actually it's actually concrete in front of um, the original uh, stone foundation. The the, um, the original section of the corn crib actually has four lineal uh, stone foundations, uh, one under each side of the corn crib. And the, um, the one here, which is exposed, uh, actually uh, created a, a bit of a shelf. So water that would come down the clapboards would basically collect on the top of that. It wasn't uh, something that really allowed water to get out. And so, you know, that has also caused rot in the uh, sill plate uh, on the on the northern portion of the corn crib. 
So that sill plate will be replaced and the, the rotted uh, floor joists in that section will also be replaced. And any of the uh, uh, members there that are still uh, viable for using as Dutchman, we would use those uh, uh, in our Dutchman repairs. You can see the uh, metal roof uh, in this image. Uh, there's actually uh, two different uh, metal roofs utilized on the building. The corn crib has an earlier version and then the rest of the building has a uh, slightly different version. And we were able to find um, modern equivalents that are pretty close um, to uh, that same profile. And um, that will go on. It, it was a uh, galvalum uh, kind of roof. So it's basically a, a, a sheet material uh, that, that's going to go on there. Uh, on the corn crib itself, there's um, sort of spacing boards that the, the metal goes over. Um, most of those are in good condition. We are anticipating that a few of those uh, will have to be uh, replaced in uh, sort of a, a very limited fashion. Uh, the other photograph in the lower right is uh, the section of N3, which I said was pretty well rotted away. Um, this image right here is probably the best looking image of that particular piece of the structure. The, um, there's a um, board there that's on top of one of the doors, uh, which needs to be rebuilt, but there's basically a pair of swing doors right there. This is where, um, you know, one of the uh, tractors uh, was formerly stored. Next uh, slide, please. So we're showing all of the, the various elevations here with all of the, the repair work uh, on, the, on the structure itself. Um, you can see on the, on the lower left, uh, where we're also calling out uh, for the work on the uh, concrete foundations. Next, please. Uh, on this, uh, this is the, the backside uh, up top. Uh, that one uh, large area of, of red that's to the left on the original corn crib structure that will completely be uh, taken out. Uh, this is just a temporary uh, partition that has been added to uh, keep folks out of there in, in the short term. Um, but when you go inside, uh, we'll, we'll go to another um, couple of slides afterwards, you can see the inside of, of what this looks like. It's a really a great piece of architecture. Um, I think people will learn a lot when they when they see it. Um, and having it open like that is, you know, really going to be a wonderful asset. You know, as as a teaching uh, tool, really part of an agricultural uh, exhibit. You can see, um, you know, the windows up top. There's actually um, really only one sash left, and as in agricultural buildings and, and the way that this is really perceived and in, in how we restore it, it's basically being restored as it was sort of at the end of its working life as, as a farm. So some of this, you know, actually dates as late as 1980s. Um, so for instance, in the bottom photograph, um, that area that is sort of uh, an overhang right there um, that was really the last piece of the structure that was added uh, in the early 80s. And um, unfortunately, it's hard to think of the early 80s being 40 years ago already, but um, <laughs> soon will be historic in and of its own right. Um, that was the area where they would basically butcher hogs, um, you know, around Thanksgiving. And those couple of um, vertical I beams that are there, there was another. It was a, a beam that was between there where they would where they would hang the hogs, but that that section is uh, a little bit later. You can see that uh, the the roof there has quite a bow to it. Um, it was pretty shabbily constructed. Um, that beam basically is going to get beefed up, so it'll have a piece of steel behind it, a steel plate, 
and, and another piece uh, of, of wood behind that to allow that span across there. That's actually two pieces of wood at the moment um, that just have a, a very simple board uh, across them. And, that, and that's why everything has sagged in the middle. Uh, we'll be replacing the, the gutters in kind, um, but they will actually drain to the right and left as opposed to over the top in the middle. Um, and these metal roofs that you see here, the, the top one is part of the um, original corn crib. That'll be the, the V crimp uh, and then the, the other uh, roof profile will be used on, on the lower sheds. And this is also the uh, face of the structure that gets um, at the bottom of that where you can see that sort of beige color right there. That's actually exposed concrete. And the reason that it's red to its right is because there's a board that they put there to try to keep the animals out. But uh, that's the section that has failed. So that whole um, foundation will be replaced along with that one wall and the, uh, the wall itself uh, will get uh, repairs to uh, some of the studs behind it. Next. Um, so actually before uh, we, can, we can stay here, but the other thing that uh, is also happening with all the clabbers is uh, they will in fact um, all be stained. Um, so, you know, the building will be uh, you know, not just left, uh, you know, in, it, in its current condition, but um, it, it will be, the wood will be stained. Um, the windows, uh, the, the one window that uh, were, uh, that still remains up in the uh, second floor uh, is actually just a sash that they simply got from somewhere else that they stuck in that opening and with a couple of nails sort of kept it there. That's why it doesn't, the, the the muttons don't align with anything because the window itself on the inside of the building actually goes about nine inches higher than the outside wall. Um, kind of typical of, you know, you use what you have. Um, so again, it, it exists. Uh, the one on the, that's adjacent on that same facade will basically copy it so we don't have two different mutton patterns on, on the same facade. The one on the front facade, um, we'll just size them, you know, as the actual window opening <laughs> sizes that are there. Um, let's see, ne next uh, slide, please. And I think we can go to the next. So here are uh, some of the conditions that we see inside. Um, you can see uh, down on the in the second row to the left, uh, we're actually in that N3 structure, which is the, the piece that is, um, I, I said, you know, we're looking at those doorways, that that whole end of the structure is going to get rebuilt. Um, the, you can see in the lower left photograph, uh, the stone foundation walls that are under each side of the corn crib sections. And the one on the left uh, is where they had poured the concrete up against the, the stone foundation. So when we take that off and we re replace that uh, section of sill, all of that stone wall will be uh, rebuilt. Uh, so we're, we're calling for that, that whole area uh, to be rebuilt by about a foot high. Most of the rest of the stone foundation is in relatively good shape. We are going to point um, both sides of each wall. Uh, there is one that you see right the, the center photograph where there's approximately a three foot section of uh, foundation wall at the end, uh, which had uh, some of the stones had fallen out. That again will also be rebuilt. The stair uh, that goes up from the first floor to the second floor is shown in the upper right. Uh, that is um, has some compromised uh, joinery that's there. Uh, those will all get tightened up so that, um, you know, that is a, a safe condition. Um, 
we are not looking to change the rise run or anything like that. It, it's, um, you know, will will remain as it was originally. Uh, but you can see that this, it was a fairly narrow area on either side where they would actually store the corn. And in the lower right, you see one length of that wall on the interior, which is all slatted. So the corn would basically be in there, um, still on the cob, shucked, and it would dry, you know, in that section. And then when you were inside on the in, the, in the center of the thing where you brought your wagon, they actually have little doorways where they would basically open up to or about the top of the wall and they would dump all the corn in there, you know, into those corn crib areas. Uh, I think the only other image here to talk about is the, the image at the center right. Uh, that is in the N1 structure. We're looking back out toward the front of the building. Those um, doors are going to get rebuilt, those swing gates uh, at the end. And that wall at the right is the wall that gets the new foundation wall. And you can even see in this photograph how it's bowed. Um, that will uh, you know, all be restored. So I think that is pretty much the full gamut of what is being intended to, to happen. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, those look like terrific drawings and there's a tremendous amount of information at your supplies that, that very much appreciated. Uh, Ms. Brown, as part of the uh, ownership team, would you like to add anything at this point in time? Um, nothing at this time, just looking forward to uh, preserving this building. Wonderful, okay. Uh, Mr. Schlichten, would you like to add anything before we move to the public? No, once again, I'm very supportive. Very good, thank you. All right, uh, the public is now invited to speak. And so uh, to indicate that you want to make a comment, if you're on a computer or a laptop, move your mouse to the bottom center of the Zoom window and you should see a raise hand button pop up. Uh, click on that button and then we can call on you. If you're dialing in on a telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. And Chris Bird. I see no one hand. with their hand raised. Very good, all righty. Uh, next then is we'll move on to the commissioners. When I call your name, please state your thoughts and questions for the applicant, Commissioner Roddy. Yeah, I have no uh, questions, but I would say as we've just uh, heard, even when this project is finished, uh, this building will not be in mint condition. It is not meant to be. Uh, the project I think will maintain the building very well over the years. And it captures the historical character of the use and period context uh, of the, the structure. I, I really like it. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner LaFrance. Tech, will you please put up packet page 102, if you can. And while they're working on that, I just wanna say the paragraph says, the doors to the corn crib on building N will be restored. The sliding barn doors that once enclosed the central bay will be removed and the space will remain open. I mention this because I'm concerned about the open space because of the possibility of people entering the building when they shouldn't and also animals. So, I guess my final question to you or to the city staff, is there any security in place to protect the building for the park? Melanie, do you wanna try, you want to answer that? Um, our initial plans are to keep the middle open. Um, this is the first phase in building the overall park. So once the park is built, um, there'll be a lot of activity. Um, so we don't, envision that, but we do have some ideas of how we could still um, keep the center part visible, but close it up um, with some type of uh, metal screening, but that's yeah. not our first choice, but we have some ideas if we need to implement them. Okay, great. And then Tech, could you please pull up packet page 103? Now, I may have missed it, but I didn't hear any commentary on uh, keeping the art 
architectural detail that's in the picture at the top of the page and above the white door. I was wondering how that was going to be handled. Yeah, that is that. That. You won't, you, you're, you're talking about uh, those diagonals that you're looking at at the moment, correct? And the two half circles. Yes, th those are actually, those are uh, diagonal braces that um, should not be exposed to view. They're actually missing clabbers that are right there. So um, the, the clabbers will go back. Actually, one thing that uh, is sort of a nice design feature that is missing now, when they, they, they had only put the one sliding door on this building, you can see the track on the east face. Um, when they did that, they had taken away two um, diagonal bents that, um, if you can kind of think of that as having chamfered corners at, at, at the opening of that, instead of it being like a rectangle, um, those will get put back and, and those, those had, had clabbers over them as well. So it'll actually sort of redefine that, that opening that was in the, in the center of the space um, much nicer. There's actually a, uh, if you go to um, packet page 129, So you can see here um, on the back side um, that that still existed, you know, uh, when I did the report in 2013, where you can see, you know, those corners. And then the one in the lower left, actually, that's a similar uh, structure at the Monocacy uh, battlefield. But, you know, you can see that that was sort of, uh, sort of an archetype um, of this building type. So that's actually one of the, the things that'll actually be going back that you don't currently see. Okay. Thank you so very much. Nothing for that's you. all I have. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Feinstein? Um, no, it's a very good presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I think security is a concern that needs to be addressed, um, maybe with some cameras, maybe with some other things that could be done um, that are you know, low profile, not <laughs> out of the way kind of things. Um, I think it's, uh, I'm very excited about th this project. Um, I think it's gonna be great for the, uh, for the community. So it was, uh, the drawings look great and I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to walk us through it because it's, uh, it should be a really, really great uh, thing for the city once it's complete. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Morgan. Um, I agree with uh, Commissioner Constant. Um, I wanna commend, uh, the county for purchasing the property um, and, and reserving uh, the uh, original uh, uh, architecture. Uh, I can remember 35 years ago driving around there with all farm and over the years has been developed into an urban area with you know, commercial and residential. And just reserving this portion of the property to, to remind people of the, uh, the history of that prop, that that area is is, is a good thing. Uh, the second um, second thing I'm going to commend the architect. Uh, your drawings is well annotated, uh, and very detailed. Uh, I appreciate that, and thanks for just taking us through the presentation. I think this is going to turn out to be a very fantastic uh, piece of project, and I show people we appreciate. Uh, just the, the res, reserving and restoring historical uh, uh, landmark. That, that, so that would be a good thing. As far as security, I show the content will provide uh, security. I, again, I don't know what it fencing. Uh, is this going to be open? Uh, I don't know. That's something that would uh, I I would suggest that. We take. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, um. Next and last, I don't think I missed anybody. Um, 
can you turn to uh, tech team um, packet page 103, which is sheet A201? Wonderful. Now, can you zoom in on text? It's at the um, it's at the top left of this drawing. It's the second um, bullet point down uh, on the left. If you can zoom in on that sentence. That's great. Okay. Um, it says, it's the second one down from the top, uh, remove um, deteriorated clapboard and replace to match existing wood clapboard. Provide clappers where missing. Okay. Um, I understand the intent of the architect and I understand the intent of the owner, which resolves everything in my mind uh, as uh, to any questions as to the quality that you guys go, are going for. Uh, only the, the best possible, and I recognize that. But um, what I think I'd like to do is at least broach the idea of presenting a clarification on that concept or that term. What I mean by that is there is a building that had a historic building, I believe it's the log house, and I think it's a neighboring building of this building or nearby. And it was in a far worse condition than this one is, but they uh, did several renovations, actually I should say two uh, phases. And one was where the building, the original structure was far leaning, it looked like it was should have collapsed, but was just standing there with a the prayer. And they set it per perfectly straight and rigid and this, the, the superstructure of the, the, the framing was remarkable what they did. Um, and they had on the drawings a term or a note that said, when it came to the clabbered, something similar, very similar, that said, remove deteriorated clabbered and replace to match existing wood. Well, in the end, uh, those of us who were around remember, there was, I believe, the percentage was zero that was saved. Zero. Uh, correct me, anybody, any commissioner. If that is not true, nothing was saved. And then they also replaced some of the interior structure too, to my understanding. Uh, but anyway, it's the exterior that we're mostly worried about. So what I'm wondering is, and this is really for the commission, because I believe that the um, the, uh, the architect and the applicant are gonna do the best possible job. I truly believe that. They wanna really preserve this, but I believe that we, at the time that we saw that other projects end result, we said to our actually we said, uh, you know, verbally in, 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 in the meeting that we really need to uh, make sure we put uh, caveats on that will not get this done, say the same the same end result done in the next in the next time around. And so this is the next time around. What I'm really mostly getting at is, since it's the city, we need to, I believe, have the same level of requirements for the public as we do, or for the city as we do for the public. So my point is, would you guys, the commissioners, uh, entertain uh, putting in a caveat or, or a condition for a minimum percentage of the existing wood to be maintained? Now, um, yeah, you're on mute, Mary Jo, if you want to pop in, but I'm thinking a high percentage, like 90% of the existing clabber that is there needs to be preserved because in the end, they're going to find some pieces can't, so it's going to be in reality 80%. But if you say 50, it's going to wind up being 30. So those are my only thoughts. I do have a question for the applicant. I thought that you said that uh, the barn door was a singular uh, term. Um, is that 
correct? Did I hear that correct? We can go back to the photo. Or is it actually two doors that are split and, and open from in the center? So there's, it depends on which doors the we're referring. The big paneled one that you were talking about is gonna have the uh, corners um, restored. That looked like, it, it looked like it's one panel right there in the middle. So, I thought you said it was a door, but my question is, isn't that two doors that get open from into the middle or is that just really one panel? No. So it, it's actually, that's actually a sliding door. Right. It's, it's, new, it's a new door actually, it's not. Right. So it's not a old, door then, you're saying it's one door. It's, it's one door and what they did is uh, you can see to the left of that, there's a different color red there. Yeah. Right. So they had, uh, when, when they decided to add that door, they actually put another piece of wall in there for a while. Um, it was there in 2013. It was in sad shape then. That was then take excuse me, taken away. And really what's there now is nothing more than, uh, you know, in essence, a piece of plywood with a couple of uh, two by fours, horizontal two by fours that keep it in place. Um, but the, the sliding door never went across the whole thing. It was, it was something that was added and it was only a portion of the original opening. Okay. All right. I, I was just curious because the barn door, when you the sliding barn door, when you look at the track, it can't possibly open up an opening behind it of equal size because the track is limited. It looks like it's half on each side. That's why I wondered is it a split. Doesn't matter to me. It essentially is what it is. I'm fine with that. I was just more curious than anything. Okay. So going. Thank you so much. So going back to the commission. Uh, does anybody have any interest? in putting a percentage in. You guys want to, oh, let's do an open forum. Does anybody want to um, throw in a thoughts on the percentage? I said 90% and that's extreme. So I apologize for being an extreme, but like I said, we, we thought we were gonna get a lot previously. We got zero. So I think we have to make sure that we set a, a, a precedence for all such buildings like this. We can't treat the city differently than we can you know, you know, the, the public. So it's fair to establish that now because we were burned. I mean, it was, I don't know if they're what their intent was, but the final product was, it was outrageous what they did. Well, Dean, how practical is this? Uh, Clabbert is very brittle after a number of years. Uh, I think well, if, you, if you establish a, a threshold of say 90%, that's just, just the number. You're right. inviting failure. No, I get it. And that's why I'm saying throw it open. I mean, if you guys say, you know, you really think it should be a 50 percent, I'm not going to argue on any of it. But here's what I do say is that we need to learn. I believe we all thought we needed to learn from what happened the previous time. And so I remember uh, I think Mark said we need to be better stewards for the city. And I, and I fully agree with that. So now's our opportunity to set a standard. And I don't care what it is, but I think that Without a standard, we're going to get this. We're open to the same thing that, that they did with the Holocaust, which was zero. And that's an, that was an outrageous. That was outrageous, I thought. There was so much of that wood that could have been salvaged. All right, I'll go along with it. Do you make it about 75 or two-thirds? I'm fine with any number you guys like. I'm telling you, if you guys say 20%, I'm going to be, I'm going to be okay with any number you guys like. This is better than zero. <laughs> if I can interject though real quick, yes, I, I, I would add if you do add a condition to that level of requiring a certain amount of material to be saved, if we are unable to do that with the project, um, it would put delays on the project and requires to come back before the commission to get that condition re, you know, re, reworded in a, in a way. I mean, I get it. that's the point. I get it. Yes, Mayor Joe. And, and, and this commissioner's open forum, just jump in, everybody. Uh, commissioners, please feel free. I understand that what Dean is trying to make everyone here accountable this time. So, and since we're throwing some ideas around, maybe one idea could be the city staff themselves inspecting it more often. So there's somebody accountable to somebody. That way the project doesn't have to be stopped 
I'm not sure that I agree with making a percentage carved in stone because as everyone's pointed out, well, unfortunately, we don't know how much of it is savable yet. But at the same time, we want everybody accountable. So, Greg, what is the city willing to do in order to help us form a condition that everybody uh, could agree to, but we see some accountability? Um, I think we could definitely, and Chris, I'll, I'll kind of defer to you a bit here on this as well, but <laughs> I, I think we could definitely say we, we will continue to inspect the project from Chris's point as a historic preservation planner on staff to ensure that it's being constructed as per the approved plans. And well, is, before we continue, perhaps we should have the foremost expert on this building in the world, mm -hmm. Mr. Thaler. Perhaps he can weigh in and give his opinion on the condition of the Mr. Cloud. Thaler in the world. That is very impressive. <laughs> You're well earned. <laughs> uh, I, I, I applaud. Uh, I absolutely applaud your your thinking uh, on this. Um, I do not see, by any stretch of my imagination, that less than fifty percent of these clabbers are going back on the building. Um, I suspect, in reality, it will be probably 70 to 80% will probably go back on this building. Um, where, frankly, where we are, uh, if you go back to that um, image that we were just looking at, you know, the reality is it's more related to um, where there are missing clabbers more than anything. So we just need to, we need to make sure that uh, those areas are buttoned up. There are, there are some that are rotted that are just too far gone. And when we, um, and, and on this facade specifically as, as a construction, um, necessity, these clabbards will come off to a large degree so that we can do the repairs to the framing underneath. Right. So when we do that, you know, uh, Mr. Roddy's comment about, you know, oftentimes they're brittle, you know, they, they can break. We will likely lose a few, but there is no reason why we should be losing many. Um, and, you know, if, if you would like, even on this, um, you know, uh, I I don't I don't know that you want to delay things. I think we're ready to more or less go out to bid soon. But um, it it clearly we can you know get a few notes uh, on here, which even uh, tighten it up you know a little bit farther, but. You, you are correct and that that is our intent. We are hired to do construction administration on this project. So we will see it all the way through. And um, at within the specifications and the, and the bidding requirements, we will be requiring contractors that are restoration contractors that have this sort of experience. And, you know, so, we won't be coming at it from just, you know, whoever is the, who's ever available kind of thing. It's wonderful. But, is there any way in the construction documents that you could set some criteria um, via notes or via detail as to what would constitute um, a board being beyond repair? Well, we actually have mock-ups and as part of the uh, specifications already. Um, so we will be sort of doing sections uh, and, you know, so there, there's mock-ups on a whole variety of different things. So there's mock-ups for masonry repair. There's, there's mock-ups for uh, Dutchman repairs to the frame. So there's all of these various mock-ups that are going to be required and those are really going to set the standard you know so the, the contractor has to do that first and then once that's okay 
then they can, you know, go and do, do the rest of the work. So it's sort of tied up in, you know, some actual practical, um, you know, situation when, you, when you're on the, on the job and, and looking at it and doing sort of an assessment one by one. But um, I think it's pretty tight at the moment in the specs. Uh, we, we can certainly, we can even probably put a, a number on, on the drawings in terms of, you know, maximum percentage or, or something like that. Yeah, I think it, if 70 if percent was a number that you thought was realistic, it seems like that would be a good number in my mind. Yeah, so, so 70 to 80 percent. I, I have a question. As you go ahead, okay, Mark, uh, you did mention uh, about uh, contractor that have experience in historical uh, 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 construction. Uh, so are you saying that this is going to be part of your bid uh, requirement for past performance? That yeah. contract. Okay, so you're going to make that. It's going to be in writing. Part of your, Correct. Your, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Aaron, you can just jump right in. I was thinking it wouldn't be a bad idea um, somehow as a condition or to write up that this uh, city staff will make a commitment every month that we meet to give us an update. Because I really feel like what happened the last time was a lack of inspection and a lack of communication to us. And if you catch impropriety going on early you can stop it we don't want to slow this project down but we do want to be continually updated and informed and i think that's all right i think that we that's within our purview i think that's wonderful but keep in mind this um i believe a contractor who is worth his salt can wipe out all that siding in one or two days and it'd be gone it, Oh. The city won't have a chance if they go out there once every couple of days or once a week or once every two weeks. It'll be gone. And that's what happened the last time. The, the city went out there and it was all gone and they threw the wood away. So that brings me to my, my point is what if we not only talk about a reasonable percentage and 90 percent is unreasonable, but I had to start. Yeah. Um, and say that all of the wood that is taken off, all the clapper, anything on the exterior, because essentially we don't really have a jurisdiction in the interior except for the superstructure which keeps it in place that type of thing but my point is that what if we say that all of the wood that is taken off and declaimed by uh, whomever the builder the subcontractor whomever as um as not worthy of not able to 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 uh, uh, maintain uh place it in a pile and it cannot be discarded until the end of the project and the um, city must approve every piece in there. That is not just take every, not take one piece at a time, but say, yes, this can be discarded at this point. Or you can say, no, a lot of this wood, you took it off, but this is salvageable. I disagree, the city can say, I disagree that this isn't salvageable wood and you want it to be put back on. And then at least in that point, because one of the things that we that happened, and this is your point, Mary Jo, is that we learned about it way too late to do anything. And so um, if the city, if, if, if we as an HDC put in the caveat that they're required to maintain all the wood that's taken off, and then it has to be uh, authorized to be uh, um, removed from the site, right. then I think, then I think when it, when something was taken off, any of the wood that is salvageable can be put back on. You just remove the piece that, you know, the brand new piece that was put on and you replace it with what the city would determine as salvageable. I think that's a reasonable requirement and it's not putting a burden on the construction time and it's not putting a burden on um, requiring the owner of the project or the builder of the project to keep things that really aren't that won't stand up. I mean, if something is completely dry rotted and it falls apart on you, no one's going to say to keep that. But what they did the last time to us, this one applicant on, the, on I think, the lockhouse, they got rid of the stuff as fast as possible. It was like, blink of an eye, it was already gone. 
and thrown away. And how do you then say, you know, we need it back? So, you know, that's my thoughts. What do you guys, you know, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Did everybody chime in? I know, um, John, did you chime in on that? The idea of uh, what you'd like to see as far as resolving, you know, anything we can do, what do you think we can do to not get the same uh, uh, end result as we had at the log house? Tough one, Dean. Uh, I, I have to say I agree with you, but- uh, What do you do, some right? Some of it's just, uh, <laughs> Borderline impractical. Well, yes and no. Here's the thing. Um, the applicant here said 50%. He said actually higher. So he said at the very at the very least 50%. Is that a reasonable number for her to say for us to say? Because we're looking at the building, and the building does look like there is more than 50% that's salvageable. And the and the architect himself is saying that at the very least he thinks 50%. So is that an unreasonable number? And then is it also unreasonable for us to say that all the wood that's uh, removed needs to be stored on site and then and the only way it can be discarded is with city approval. Are those two requirements unreasonable on our part? Well, let me address the second one first. When I say unreasonable, uh, no, it's not unreasonable, but it's a, an additional factor. Remember, there's a history of arson on that site in a pile of old boards is going to be an attractive nuisance. Okay, I won't argue that, but right now you have a pile of old boards in the building itself, and that's what they did to the other building, you know, so I'm not sure that that's going to, it's not a deterrent either way, whether it's in place in situ or if it's been, you know, put in a pile, but they already burnt the building to the ground. I mean, they, the city needs to take other measures to prevent such stuff from happening right. again. It's not our business to right. say what they should and shouldn't do. Video cameras are the best thing going. You have video, you know, surveillance evidence and, and, and notification of such is a deterrent. Um, I, I won't argue your point. If people see a pile of wood, they'll say, oh, that's a good place to start a fire. But I think it's they can do it now. I'm sorry. It, it's simple enough. There, there's plenty of space in the corn crib to, mm -hmm. to store it. it. It's not an issue. I mean, you could put it in either N3 or N1 or even in one of the corn crib, you know, sections in the, in the short term. I mean, just simply putting it in N1 and, you know, nobody can get into it, you know, as long as it's closed up, which, you know, we'll be calling for anyway. So, it's not that's a, wonderful. Not that's wonderful. Yeah. So you're you're not finding that to be a burden, an unnecessary burden to you. That that's wonderful. Um, here's another thought too. I said let's keep it to the end of the project, which is fine, but I don't think it's necessary. What if we say that um, the the the, the um, wood that is claimed to be unusable gets stored until the city comes out and 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 agrees. That is, if the city comes out every two weeks. They'll, they'll say that pile right there, those pieces should be saved, the rest could be gone. Then you have the authority to get rid of it at that point in time. So you won't be piling stuff up for any uh, uh, quantity. Yeah. Does that right, sound good to you, you John Roddy? I'm sorry? You wore me down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, does that sound good to you? Because I think, I think you're right. I think, you know, if there's a giant pile of wood, uh, certainly kids can play on it and get hurt on it. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm open to that as a, as a concern. I agree with you that that's a concern. Maybe this is the solution, you know, even if this, even if there's only three pieces of wood, when the city comes out, if, if they say, yeah, that's useless, then get rid of it as soon as they bless it, you know, or as soon as they bless removal. And uh, so, so how often will the city go out there, Chris? Um, do you have an idea generally how often you go, guys go out? Um, I'll I'll make a commitment to try to go out there once a week, Melanie. Oh, that's I know, a lot. I mean, I don't even know if you have to do that much, but yeah, I know Melanie will be out there quite a bit. Okay, but, so um, then you guys just decide if if we if the commission says that that's a reasonable thing to put in as a condition, yeah. um, you guys decide amongst yourselves if you have a single person to give the authorization or if everyone from the city has the authority. That's up to you guys. But I like that idea. At least then. You got a set of eyes looking at wood that's been claimed as useless. And if you guys agree with it, we of course 
the HDC would of course agree with it as well. So, well, that sounds great. That sounds great. Um, anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, Frank, please. I was going to suggest <clears throat> in terms of this condition, um, I mean, if you want to impose specific numbers, uh, it's always possible that that would require uh, folks to come back and ask for an amendment. But what you could also say is simply preserve the maximum um, amount of wood that's possible and none of it uh, could be discarded without city approval. So that doesn't necessarily yeah. require every week or every few days somebody to inspect if it's two weeks, it doesn't matter. Nothing's going to be thrown out without the city approving. Yeah, I, 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 that, that is one of two thoughts that I have on it. That is the second thought. If you're saying, and if the commission says that that's the only thought that matters, I'm fine with it too, but how do you tell somebody to take down the whole wall? I'm not saying this application, because I know that the architect and the city want to truly preserve as much as possible. But how do you tell somebody to put all the wood back when they took the whole thing down? I mean, it's a hard thing. You can stop uh, you, them you, in the street. You, never, you all never met my father, but he dealt with a lot of work. And Frank Johnson Sr. would have no hesitation in telling Is somebody he for to hire? put everything back. Is he, he did it all the time. <laughs> uh, let's get him on board. Yeah, well, he passed. Uh, here's the thing I'll ago. say. In, in construction, uh, everybody I'll say wants to do a good job. But when they make an error, if you catch them early on, they were happy to replace, repair, fix up. But once it's done, you're going to have somebody fighting you tooth and nail. And it'll be something that will be hard to do to tell somebody to rip everything down and rebuild it. I'm telling you. Uh, so, I, so, so it's up to the commission because I'm open. I'm, I'm so flexible on this to whether we only want to say the city has to approve every piece um or also say a percentage i'm open to anything yes mr Thaler. I, have a, I have a suggestion uh, uh well let me go to mr Thaler. i already, okay. already asked him and i'll come right to you rudy okay so one very simple suggestion that uh might make is you know we can basically have the contractor as one of their submittals just we can have a photograph of the elevation with every clabbered on there and which clabbered is, is going to be replaced. So we, you know, you, we simply make that determination before they are, before they take anything off, you know, yes, there may great be idea. when they take them off that get broken or whatever. Okay. we got some extras, but it's already sort of a, a given. These are the ones that, you know, are, are being replaced and both ourselves and you know Melanie have to approve that before they That's great. move in. That's great. That gives me my one of two issues resolved. I'm, I'm delighted with that. I, I can live with that. What do you guys, what do the commission think? Rudy, I'm sorry, it's your turn, please. Yes, uh, it, it could, uh, so basically I'm gonna go, Mark, are you suggesting a, a submit a law that would show what is gonna be stole? Is that what you're referring to? So there, there'll, there will be many submittals on this project. So, mm -hmm. you know, if for different, for different aspects of things, but one of the submittals could certainly be where they basically just take, you know, the photograph of each facade yeah. and they show each specific clabber that they're intending to replace versus, you know, restore. Yeah, like what you did on the drawing, some annotation to it that this is taking out going to be. Okay. Um, yeah. one, one thing I suggest from the city, uh, if you have a pod, like a, a station area where you stole the, this material, just for risk to the contractor, liability to the contractor, just make sure that it should be documented that if, you, if the city don't show up to inspect, and anything happened to the material, it, 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 the contract is not liable. Is that is but that the, something? Because the contractor, the contractor is liable. Okay. He's basically going to be taking over that site and control of okay. that site, and there will be a construction fence around that site. Okay. All there, right. there is no reason why anything that happens within that site 
should be his responsibility until that project is done. Okay, you're talking about the city coming to inspect. Okay, if 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 the if the if the city come to inspect, it would be during a time where the contractor is gonna be on site, right? Right? So this the, the city is not coming behind the contractor because if they come behind the contractor and something happens when a contractor shows up on the site, that it should be something to protect the contractor. That's my suggestion. So there should be something stipulated in in in, in the requirement that the inspection will be done during uh, the time when a contractor is on site. During business hours, but my guess yeah, is- Yeah, business hours, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I'm referring to. My guess is they already do that. They wanna do that. They don't wanna show up at a job site. Now I'm speaking on behalf of the city, but you guys, maybe Chris Berger used to tell, tell us that, is that the case. You guys will always go during business hours, not after hours or a weekend, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. so that's pretty standard, Rudy. So I don't think I have concern on Wait. that as a caveat. Sometimes people take labor to do it after. Well, there's a lot of things that go on that you don't want to have go on in the job site. I know that. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so we're going to make a motion. Okay, well, there I hear a volunteer. Oh, my. <laughs> what did I get myself? You're going? always the bravest one, Mary Jo, so please help us oh out. Oh, my goodness. All right, hold on. Uh, <laughs> I move the Historic District Commission based on the exhibit submitted and the staff report findings and recommendation grant HIST 8823-2021 rehabilitation of the Crown Farm Corn Crib at 403 De Cloverly Drive finding it to be in compliance with section 24227.2 of the city code with the following conditions. That the majority of the original siting and would be, re be put back and, on um, the building and not discarded. And with and without city approval, is that that what we're trying to say here? Uh, and that the contractor produce pictorial evidence to keep us updated on how much of the wood is not going to be salvageable. Um, well, add in advance of its removal. In its advance of its removal. But it would, but we also want to say it would be approved by the city. city. Yeah, without be city approved approval. by us. Right. Because right. we only meet right. once a month and we can't hold it up. That's right. That's what I said. With that, nothing. Okay. Would, the would not be discarded without city approval. That's okay. in the motion. Okay. And does, Victoria Evidence, right? Does that sound right to everyone? Does anyone want to throw in a clarification or something different? Maybe the, instead of saying the wood will not be discarded without city approval, maybe the wood will be stored in in a safe place on the on the job site for inspection by the city prior to disposal. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank good, you. Good, That's great. Good. Yeah. All right. You want to say safe and secure? secure. Safe and secure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. John, Roddy, you want to throw anything in further on that before we um, go for a vote? What I'll throw right. in there is a second. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I, all right. And Rudy, you want to throw in anything further before we go for a vote? No. Okay. okay. So, um, may I, so that was a motion to approve uh, with conditions. Uh, uh, so may I have a second? And John, you seconded. Yeah. Okay. Before, so, I'm sorry? before you get the chance, yes, I don't mean to interrupt, but no, before go ahead, you please. get the chance to vote, I'm not sure I understand what the condition is. And I think Chris is going to be the one probably putting it together, um, not to put him on the spot, but if just so that everybody understands what they're voting on. Um, That's a great idea. And what's actually being approved. If, okay. if Chris could give his understanding of what that, what Mary Jo's motion uh, I think that's a great idea. Then we might be in good shape. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Now, Mary Jo, it sounded like you do you do have two separate conditions. That's what we were talking about. And it sounded like that's where you were going. So can you, if that's true, if that's the case, can you state 
restate each one. So start with number one and then number two. I, I think it's all right if Chris Berger repeats it back to us. That way we have clarification he's understood. So you want to retain the majority of the clapboard siding and the wood framing. And the second is you want to have that wood um, secured in a safe location prior to it being uh, thrown away. After well, well, city I, inspection. Yeah, and after, well, after city city staff, I the, the staff, the city staff, or the city uh, approval of it being discarded. It must be, main, it must be maintained yeah. uh, and can only be discarded after the city approval. Got it. And do we also want to add the pictorial evidence? We've gotten a commitment this evening that there will be some pictorial uh, I thought that was, evidence. Yeah. Yes, I thought that was your first line, the first one that you mentioned. So yes, that that it needs to be uh, documented and approved prior to removal. So the first one is a document provided to the city from the contractor indicating which pieces will be discarded and they have to be approved, that drawing has to be approved by the city prior to any removal. Um, and so those are your two. So does that sound good to you, to everybody? I don't think we were trying to prevent the contractor from removing the wood, just not disposing of it. I think the pictorial, the, the picture evidence is to state emphatically which ones they know they can't reuse. Well, but right? that, if, if they did a drawing that the city didn't agree with, let's say I'm gonna exaggerate, and they did 90% have X's through it. Well, the city has to approve or deny that drawing. So prior to any other removal. So I'm sorry, did I misunderstand what you were saying? Mary Jo? Just wanted to make sure Chris understood where we were coming from, but I think we're getting stuck on the pictorial evidence. Well, it's just a drawing in advance to be approved by the city um, prior to any of the removal of this of the of the wood. You understand, That's Chris Berger, yeah. that we would like mm -hmm. to add that. Thank you. Yeah. And okay, good. So we have. Yeah. Can, is Chris it all right? Can, can we vote? Can do it. John can do it. Greg can do it. Whoever yeah. wants to. But that my point is that that when they see ninety percent X out, they'll they'll step up and say that's not acceptable, and they'll go yeah. in and inspect and have and the builder would have to prove to them that yeah. those X's really are valid. And if the city says ninety percent goes, we don't as an HDC, I believe, have any concern with that. We trust the city. Okay, very good. All right. Um, so the motion was made with conditions. It was seconded. Any further thoughts before we go to a vote, before we take the roll? Is the applicant want to throw anything in further before we go for the vote? Uh, I'm sorry, Mark Thaler, Melanie, nope. John Schlichten. I hear and see no one. Okay, very good. All right. So uh, when I call your name, please say aye if you support the motion, nay if you want, uh, if you. Um, uh, don't support it or abstain if you wish. Commissioner Rye. Aye. Commissioner Orfance. Aye. Commissioner Feinstein. Aye. Commissioner Morgan. Aye. And Commissioner Ventola says aye. So that's five to zero, motion passes. So congratulations to the applicant, architect and city. Uh, this is gonna be a great project, like everybody said. We can't wait because we know that you guys really wanna do a bang up job, make this thing work just so valuable, show, show the value that it has and preserve it, that's, that's wonderful. So thank you guys very much. All right, next then is the uh, next item on the agenda is reconsideration requests, which is uh, regarding 414 East Diamond Avenue. May we have an introduction from staff, please? Yes, if the tech team can pull up page 173. And while they do that, I'll begin. As you know, the mayor and council voted at its March 15th meeting not to accept the HDC's petition to designate as historic the property owned by Identity at 414 East Diamond Avenue 
The council also did not express openness to designate the stretch of former residences along East Diamond Avenue. With that, Identity has requested the HDC withdraw its directive to the city manager for demo 23332-2020 in accordance with section 24-231D2I, which states the commission may withdraw its directive to the city manager if it determines that failure to grant the permit applied for will have the effect of denying the property owner all reasonable use of the property or would cause the property owner to suffer undue economic hardship. Staff supports identity's request and contends by not granting the demolition permit after the man, mayor and council's decision, it would cause identity undue economic hardship. Staff recommends the HDC vote to withdraw its directive to withhold issuance until May 27th and the permit be allowed to be issued. And before I turn it over to the commission, I'll bring to the chair's attention that I do believe that we have a speaker from the public on this. Oh. Oh, okay, very good. Um, do you have so if their you could, name? If you could make your announcement about and, and provide the process for raising hands, that would be Oh, helpful. okay, yes. I didn't think that this was open to the public. Um, so here we go. Um, to indicate, this is for the public to, to um, um, be invited to speak, to indicate that you want, it, that you want to make a comment if you're on a computer or laptop, move your mouse to the bottom center of the Zoom window and you should see a raise hand button pop up. Uh, click on that button and then we can call on you. If you're dialing in on a telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. And I do not see their hand raised, so maybe they do not wish to speak, but we will keep an eye on that if they would like to comment. Okay. All right, um, does uh, the uh, city uh, uh, want to say anything further? That is John Swickton, would you like to um, put in some inf uh, your thoughts on this matter? No, I have nothing further. Okay, very good. Um, okay, so then I guess let's go to the commission. Um, on a calling name, please state your thoughts and, and I guess questions or issues, uh, starting with Commissioner Arati. Uh, thank you. Uh, I do have a question uh, because this is a somewhat uh, different procedure. I guess I would direct it to uh, Frank Johnson. Can you tell us what the practical ramifications would be if we were to decline, we were not to withdraw? Well, uh, at this point, you have a four month hold on the demolition permit being issued from January 27th. So no demolition permit would be able to be issued if it's not withdrawn until four months after that, that would be May 27th. Um, in terms of any other practicality, there, there's no other restriction. The building is currently condemned, um, but the, the undo, I believe the undo part of the, uh, um, economic hardship was that the main purpose for holding up the permit was to give time to consider whether or not to preserve, um, to designate the property to be uh, as for historic preservation. And right. with that not being on the table, that would that would be the element there. But uh, but as far as not being uh, not being withdrawn, it would just mean that it remains in place until May. 27th, yeah. um, your lifting it does not necessarily mean the demo permit would, would be issued because there is a process and uh, certain standards have to be satisfied for that. But, um, but at least what it, the only difference is it would allow the process to go forward now rather than waiting until the end of May. So the activity of the commission, uh, the city council uh, last week, did not abrogate the effect of our hold. Did, did you get a chance to no, watch? No, the hold, the hold remains in place. If that is your question, you're, those are two different decisions. Right. Yeah, there are two different decisions. Right now, the hold's in place until May 27th. John, did you get a chance to watch what the, 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 the city um, debated? Um, no, I did not. 
I, I did. Um, and too. I'll say that it's my yeah. vantage point. It's just my personal vantage point that there was zero support, uh, not even not even a one percent support for uh, uh, yes. maintaining this building from its historical um, mm -hmm. value. Um, it's not, it wasn't even a close thought. It was, I guess it was the vote six to nothing. I'm not even sure, but it was, it was overwhelming that they did not, uh, not only in my personal opinion, did not only uh, disagree with our belief that it was worth preserving, um, but they, to me, appeared, um, uh, how shall I say it, um, bewildered is the only word I can I say as to why we felt so strong about it. And so but, but here's my thought, based on the zero chance, in my opinion, of this building being designated by the mayor council, I would think that it would be because of that zero chance, in my opinion, and actually it was voted, you know, it was unanimous not to, not your not opinion, to go yeah. forward. I'm sorry, what? It's not your opinion. It was the vote. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Well, I'm trying to be, I'm trying not to get myself in trouble. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, so my point is, is that we fully believe, I believe at least four out of five of us fully believe that this art, this piece of architecture had significance worth preserving. But, uh, and the fifth person, if I can say, would have, would, would have said that had it been in a, um, a historic district already, then, then, it, then it would have been worth preserving. But I can probably also say that if, if the mayor and council saw this particular building in already inside a historic uh, uh, district, uh, they probably would have come with a different vote on it as well. But, but I'm going with, here I'm going with in the long run is that in my personal opinion, it is going to have zero chance of designation based on what I saw from the mayor and council meeting. And based on that, there really is, in my opinion, no reason for us to hold up uh, the demolition for a building that's not going to be designated. So that's my thought. That would sound reasonable. Mary, Mary Jo, yes, please. I as well, of course, uh, watched the mayor and council meeting. And I want to say, if we want to try to do this as honestly and truthfully as possible. We could say that because we, the HDC, were unable to meet the very high standard that the city staff require for their support in historic designation, it explains why the mayor and council did not support historic designation. So at this point, if we do not uh, all vote uh, yes tonight so that the demolition permit would be released, we would be capricious in our action because as you pointed out, Dean, uh, as far as I know, there's no steps that we could take now to change the future of this property. So we need to do the right thing uh, by the applicant. But I did want to mention as a side note that we don't consider uh, economic hardship unless we hear that in a hearing. And right now, there's no evidence to that. But if we were to hold the demolition permit capriciously, we could, in fact, put undue economic hardship on the applicant. That, that's my, my, my belief as well. That is, since it, in my opinion, has zero likelihood of this, a, after the mayor and council met, it has zero likelihood of getting designation. So I don't think it's appropriate for us to uh, uh, put a hold on this any further because all that will do, like I think Mary Jo, you said, is that it's only going to, in the end, harm the applicant um, by withholding it but, but it will never be fully withheld. It will, after the four months are up, the building yep. will be demolished. Right. So my, I don't think there's any reason for us. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't want to say we lost the battle. It doesn't, it's, not a, it's not really a, a battle to worry about. We lost the, the, uh, 
the, the building and those along the strip. But the city mayor and council find the economic value of those properties to outweigh the historicity of this project. Exactly. I can live with that. I mean, we have designated uh, districts. Uh, they, I believe, have said that these are where we are with the designated districts, and they don't think that these other or this particular area is worth designated. It's it, it, projects. I, I'm sure the houses they think are nice, but the, the city's economic value of these properties has to outweigh that, and that's what I think they expressed. And I'm in agreement with that. I, well, I'm not in a disagreement at all with that. I mean, it is a CBD, uh, and so. You know, if somebody wants to come and put a 10-story uh, building there, they won't be able to if it's a historic structure right there. So I get it. I get what the city's saying. And I have no, no concerns whatsoever, personally, from removing this direct, withdrawing the direct. That's my own two cents. Did we hear from everybody? Rudy, go ahead. Tell me your thoughts. <laughs> you don't want to hear. <laughs> I'm sorry? I said, where, um, I, I think to sum everything up, I think it's more of an economic and political reason. I, I, I just have to bring it up. It's more oh, yeah. economic. I mean, if you hear from the, 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 the uh, lawyer from, uh, from the, 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 uh, the client or the applicant, the applicant himself, and I think he made, he made a good case why uh, he wants to uh, bring down the building and put a new building up. I mean, he said it over and over. So I showed that presentation was made to the city council. And I think it's more economic and political. And at this point, I don't see any need for us to keep holding up the application. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and then my vote will be to release it. Okay. Mark, did you want to throw your thoughts in if you didn't already? Uh, no, I think we should withdraw the directive. Okay. Can we have a motion then to withdraw the directive? I move that the Historic District Commission, based on the staff recommendation, withdraw its directive to the city manager that demo 23332-2020 be withheld four months until May 27, 2021. Okay. Is that from what this uh, staff recommended? Did you read from that? Because yeah, that correct. was important. Okay, I wanted to make sure because I spoke to uh, them earlier and I think that they work through a particular wording that they wanted. I just wanted to make sure that that's the wording that you used. Okay, great. All right, so then can we have a second? Second. Okay, all right. So uh, I, if you support the motion to withdraw, um, nay, if you don't, and abstain if you wish. Uh, Commissioner Rada. Aye. Commissioner Royal France. Aye. Commissioner Feinstein. Aye. Commissioner Morgan. Aye. Commissioner Ventola says aye. So the motion passes five to zero. Um, thank you, everybody. Appreciate that. Uh, next then is uh, discussion topics, which is in reference to potential historic designations. So may we have an introduction from staff? Yes, if the tech team can pull up page 177. So in light of Council's decision on 414 East Diamond, uh, staff believes it is beneficial to revisit this list of potential historic resources from the 2018 preservation element of the master plan. This is a list of the properties agreed on by various different city departments, the HDC, the Planning Commission, and the Mayor and Council as potential properties that may be considered for historic designation. There's no guarantee that these properties will actually be designated, but it is our guide. Earlier this week, the city manager specifically opened the door for staff to pursue National Register of Historic Places listing for the first property on the list, Summit Hall. This property has long been viewed as a property worthy of this, of this status, so this may not mm. be much of a surprise. The difference now is that the city manager has encouraged the HDC and staff to speed up the process for National Register listing, whereas before the, this listing of the property was very low on the list of priorities. So with that, staff seeks the commission's comment on whether or not it would like to pursue national register listing for Summit Hall and what other properties listed here it, you would see as a priority. And of course the hour is very late and we don't see tonight as the sole discussion on this list. So if you would like more 
information on a particular property, it can always be brought up at a future meeting. And before I turn it over to the Commission, Planning and Code Administration Director John Schlichting would like to say a few words. Welcome back, John. Well, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, yeah, this, this is kind of a significant development because um, we've had a change of city managers and uh, with a change of city managers is a different um, focus on historic preservation. And I don't know how many of you know this, but um, you know my first exposure to city government was the Historic Preservation Advisory Committee in 1995. Uh, 94, 94. And um, so, you know, historic preservation is a big focus of mine. And this is pretty exciting that we've had this change of focus with the city manager who is open to historic uh, national designation of some of our city properties. So um, that's pretty exciting. And Summit Hall Farm Park, um, you know, those properties are more designatable than anything else in the city. According to Chris, that's what, you know, that's, Chris has told me that. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, this is exciting tonight and um, uh, look forward to your consideration. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you very much. All right, um, so let's go through the list. Let's hear from the commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Roddy, your thoughts? Well, certainly uh, Summit uh, Hall Park is a, uh, very proper designation. Uh, the rest, I think, uh, would bear some discussion. And uh, certainly tonight is probably not the best night to uh, attempt it. But it's good to have that out there. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Rodolphe. Well, I'm going to let myself brag a little bit because I was the first one that ever asked the city of Gaithersburg to consider Summit Hall Farm park really national recognition wow and i have been asking chris and pestering him usually about once a month but i've kind of slowed down on that recently but yes so i am quite excited i am also so pleased to have the support of the city manager for us to move ahead and do what we are meant to do which is look at these properties before us and see where we should be considering designation. So exciting. Wonderful, thank you so much. All right, Commissioner Feinstein. I definitely um, agree with uh, the Commissioner Roddy and Commissioner LaFrance. Um, it's a great move for the city. Um, I look forward to discussing other properties at a, a later time as well, because I think there are this other properties that are equally designatable in the city. Wonderful, thank you. Commissioner Morgan. I agree, I concur with the rest of the commissioner. Uh, I think I look forward to discussing uh, the uh, property that has been uh, proposed uh, uh, for destination, uh, historical destination. I look forward to working with that. Thank you very much. And I agree with all you guys. All right, <laughs> so that's it for that. Um, next then is anything from staff. Yeah, just briefly, the HDC training is Tuesday, April 13th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And the subject will be design review. And we will be joined by commissioners and staff from both Rockville and Laytonsville. Wonderful. Did you say, what time did you say it was? Seven, seven, seven p.m., yes. That's what I thought. Seven. Okay, good. Okay, wonderful. April, wonderful. Thank you. April 13th. Okay. okay, very good. Um, anything from Greg? Nothing for me tonight. Thank you. Okay, Frank? Nothing for me, but thank you. Okay. Um, John Sickting, you want to throw anything in further? Yes. I wanted oh. to update you on Lake Forest Mall. Um, oh, wow. Lake Forest Mall uh, <laughs> Master Plan update. We yeah. are in the public comment period. It began yeah. last Friday. And um, we are actually embarking on a number of intentional engagement meetings. Um, there's going to be two public meetings. Nothing's been actually scheduled yet, but it's all going to be within the 60-day period. 
and um, and probably late April, early May, um, all focused on the joint public hearing of the Planning Commission and the Mayor and Council on June seventh. But um, you know, lots of uh, meetings, two public meetings, probably late or early May, um, a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce of uh, Gaithersburg, Germantown, a meeting with Asbury, a meeting with Montgomery Village, and um, oh, the five meetings with the individual meetings of the um, uh, of the owners of Lake Forest Mall. So. Lots of meetings to come, and um, lots of lots of uh, progress to go. So, okay, wonderful. Any thoughts? Final thoughts before we adjourn? Yes, Mayor. I, I had had planned uh, to discuss some further stuff about historic resources, um, but I don't want to keep us up any later. It's late, and we're all tired. So, I'll just be very quick and say that I have some photographs that I took in Old Town because I think we should be familiar with these buildings. It's very important. And I'm going to encourage the whole entire board, get out of your car, go look at these places. It's important. Also, the historic uh, master plan is 2018. So as was already pointed out, some of the wish list stuff has already been designated because we've got the Kentlands and the barns and this and that. So we need to update that too as to what is historically designated already and what potentially we may be interested in. And I will leave it at that and I'll pull together something else for a shorter meeting. Wonderful. Thank you, thank, thank you everybody. Oh, we are here. Wait a minute. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> the first time Gaithersburg ever designated a building was 1983. It seemed that the mayor and council had a disconnect between why some of these buildings hadn't been designated until now. And if you look at what is designated and the years that it took to get them there, and the fact that we didn't even start designated until 1983, that's the answer to that question. Okay, sorry, that's it. All right, you're okay now? One last? Okay. We're okay. hereby adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye now. Bye-bye. <laughs>